Hello and welcome back all you maniacal medics out there. I'm Alan I hold shift down it for you and this is the Battle Medic Blueprint Part 2 Balancing Act. Here in Part 2 we are going to be looking at the first steps into becoming an advanced Battle Medic player and how to best balance the time you spend healing, fragging, and most importantly staying alive throughout each of those. If you have not watched Part 1, the basics to being a Battle Medic, I encourage you to go back and watch it now as we will continue building on topics discussed there. If you recall back to part 1, we spent some time talking about how to most effectively move in low gravity areas. By using a combination of the hover pack and backfire mechanics, the battle medic can move rather rapidly from one side of the map to the other. However, what we did not talk about is how to better move in normal gravity areas. In fact, all I did was tease at what we'll be focusing on for this part of the lesson, bunny hopping. I see too often new battle medics either moving like a snail by not using their hover pack, or activating the hover pack and keeping it on the entire time. That option may move you faster, but it doesn't provide much burst mobility or unpredictability in your movement. This is where bunny hopping comes into play. Almost every class in the game can maintain momentum after their movement ability by jumping normally. Battle Medic does not have this luxury. Watch the keys very closely. You'll see that by rhythmically timing my shift key, I can activate the hover packs to get the initial burst out of them and then quickly deactivate them to conserve fuel, and then repeat as soon as I hit the ground resulting in the hopping motion. This is key because Battle Medic is one of the only classes that can properly bunny hop around the map in any direction you choose, with the exception of Assassin and Wraith who can use charges to do this. By holding down a direction and then starting the bunny hopping ritual, you will start to find your maneuverability increase immensely. I would recommend trying this in each direction a handful of times, and then attempting to maneuver around the normal gravity areas of the map entirely. Applying this in-game is extremely crucial when it comes to you getting pushed on by one of those pesky high mobility characters like Wraiths, Assassins, and Vanguards. Or of course, your occasional gunslinger who uses all three dashes to jump into your face. Looking at you, Edge and Ricotta. Being able to kite backwards or maneuver to help teammates very quickly is a huge plateau that a lot of battle medics face. Unfortunately, besides showing you that this is possible to do, a lot of this technique comes with time and practice to build a feel for how much fuel you are using and when it is best to bite a bullet, move slow, and rebuild your fuel. Which leads to our next category, Fuel Management. Fuel management seems to be one of the most taboo conversations for most players. Since it seems like such a minor part of the game, a lot of people become wary of asking one of the best questions you can ask when attempting to get better with any character. How do I get better at managing fuel in combat? Don't worry, you don't have to ask me, I'll just go ahead and answer it. This first example is what I see most battle medics do when they play in low gravity areas. They hit their hover pack to get in the air and then keep it on 90% of the time that they're in low grav. Remember, your lobber and firefly will propel you opposite the direction you're shooting. So while you have your hover pack on and are shooting your lobber down towards the objective, you're actually boosting yourself higher and higher, putting you out of line of sight. But Shift, you just taught me how to use burst mobility in one direction and then another. I'm doing that, but I keep running out of fuel. Well, calm down there. Take a look at how that burst is really moving you. It's not that much in the scheme of things. Slow enough by far for any class to continue to track you, so you're just really wasting your fuel here. And then when you run out, you're floating like an unwanted squiggly line in your opponent's eye. Oh, squiggly line in my eye fluid. Instead, watch the fuel here. By deactivating the hover pack, taking some time to shoot either a lobber or a firefly, and then reactivating it when I actually need a reposition, I hardly ever run out of fuel. Again, shooting in front of you while you're trying to retreat will continue to move you at a faster rate than when your pack is on. So, moral of the story? Turn your shit off when you're actually floating in low grav. Only use it to get more airborne, change position quickly, or to bunny hop away from an enemy or towards your team. Training yourself to be the master of shift couldn't be more important. Although, I may be slightly biased. Oh, and those grav orbs? Super useful, by the way. I suggest playing around with them until you find yourself getting extra speed when you exit them while rebuilding your fuel. And really, there's no better way to make an assassin's head spin. Let's switch gears into something that I'm pretty sure not a lot of people have taken the time to figure out. The reticles. The firefly reticle is pretty self-explanatory. You'll notice that the reticle is set up in a triangle-like shape. That's done for a reason. Each mini arch around the triangle setup shows the outermost impact zone of each of our laser bullets. So as I move the reticle to the outer edges of those arches, the bullet impacts will again move the same way. So what this means is that you really should still be focusing on the dead center of the reticle because we want to hit all three of those shots. Easy enough. Good for reference. Now, the lobber. 
This is a little different. We'll use this bougie Versace luggage as our testing zone. You'll notice a step ladder type setup in the reticle of the lobber. Each step also has a V-like zone right in the center with a dot in the middle of that. These are here to help you adjust your width based on the length of the line, your direct shot zone based on the length of the V, and of course, the center of your shot, which is what the dot is for. So, for close range shots, you'll want to notice the topmost step of the ladder. Line up the width indicator, and of course, your shot, kaboom. That's an easy example. But notice how we use the reticle as we get further away from our target. Our second shot, we do the same thing. Line up the width, center the shot, voila. And for the last, no big width indicator here, but that's done for a reason. At this distance, all you want is that V in the center of your reticle, as it's not just the centering point, but also it mimics the total width of your shot. Same thing for the last single dot at the end. Keep in mind as we run through the process one more time, that sitting still and lining up your shot distance is not exactly what we would call applicable. But still, getting familiar with your distance control is extremely crucial if you want to have a damage impact in your games. You'll start to find that as you get more familiar with the distance, you'll be hitting a lot more direct shots and, of course, resulting in more secured kills. Since we're on the topic of weaponry and it's least talked about mechanics, let's get into Reloading! OMG, so exciting. But seriously, how often are you caught with an overheated firefly and no rounds in your lobber? If you're anything like me while learning the class, it's happened more times than you'd like to count. So let's remedy this. The firefly, as we mentioned in part one, does not have a true ammo count, but rather an overheating mechanic. After four bursts, the firefly will spread its wings and attempt some sort of takeoff slash reload animation. This animation takes almost as long as it would to fire an entire new set of shots, a rather considerable amount of time. However, if you shoot three or less bursts and wait a bit, the weapon will actually recharge much quicker to its green state. Even better, if you shoot three bursts and then quick switch to a lobber shot, or heal a nearby ally and switch back to the firefly, you'll already be at full charge again. Typically in battle, you'll see me doing a three round burst, lobber shot, three round burst, lobber shot, rinse, lather, repeat. So keep a mental count of your bursts, get used to shooting two to three, and then looking for a heal or a quick switch to your lobber. You'll find yourself staying in battle a lot longer and having a much greater impact on the fight as a whole if you can manage to continually keep your firefly from overheating. Now, the lobber. The lobber has a three-part reload to the weapon before the clip has been fully reset. The first part is the punch, the second, the clip, and the third is the final spin. Why am I mentioning this? This seems kind of stupid. Well, audience member, this is important because all of these animations can get cancelled and will routinely hold you up from completing your reload. Look here. As I start my reload and either quick switch to a firefly or heal a nearby ally, the animation will restart all over it again depending on which part in the cycle I'm in. This is a struggle that even still I continue to run into every now and again while trying to heal or quick switch depending on the situation I find myself in. There is no best way to counter this, but to minimize the animation effects, you should be trying to do one of two things. Either number one, wait until your ammo count UI goes green before switching, or number two, wait until at least the spin part of the animation, as it's by far the fastest part. And at the least, now you know that this is holding you up in your damage effectiveness. Okay, enough with the in-depth super detailed explanations. Let's talk about some quick hit tips that can help you get a little bit better. Let me ask you guys a few questions just for a little self-introspection. This is like a sociology experiment or something. I, I don't know, just, just go with it. How often do you use the right click on your lobber? If your answer was not at all to very little, I encourage you to explore using it more. Not only is this another great tool to help kite, but it also is great when it comes to spamming key defensive areas safely. Not much else really to say. Just go out there and find some set spam spots on the map. You may not be getting massive kills with this, but I can assure you that your survivability will increase while still having an impact on the fight. So start getting your protractors and bow compasses out and work those angles like the wannabe billiards trick shot players that we all want to be. Another awareness item. How often do you go to help teammates isolated in 1v1s? If your answer ranged from, the only 1v1 I get's in my own, or teammates, what's that mean? I encourage you to start taking the blinders off and start being aware of when a teammate is isolated and needs some help. Or, just knowing when an enemy is chasing into your backline, how can you help peel and heal at the same time? Or finally, 
how to switch between shooting and healing in the middle of team fights to again ensure that your team has an effective HP advantage. All I'm saying is keep those eyes open on more than just what you are doing. And try to actually keep in mind that you're supposed to be a support first and foremost. Last awareness question. How well do you know the maps? And on top of that, how well can you read where enemies will be moving based on the map layouts? If you answered, I can't even put the map names to the maps themselves, to I know there's like green things over here and some gravity somewhere over here, then you need to start making yourself more aware. Knowing where cover and health packs are, great. Knowing the map well enough to move backwards, even better. You'd be surprised how much this comes into play not only for your survival, but also to start zoning out enemies based on likely movement paths. Get those eyes moving and start taking some chances with your shots. Predicting locations and distances will not only boost your anticipation, but also your kill participation. And that wraps up our second part of the Battle Medic Blueprint. Keep in mind that we flew through a lot of information here really quickly. If anything, treat this as just a showcase into what you can do with the Medic, but actually doing these things fluidly at a high level does take a lot of practice. So get into game, try these things out, and come back to see if you're doing them right. Also be sure to come by the stream, I'll be happy to discuss and showcase some things you may be having trouble with at twitch.tv slash iHoldShift. And of course, last but not least, keep an eye out for the Blueprint 3, not a Jay-Z album, where we'll be looking at the most advanced techniques to become a master at Battle Medic. In that episode, we'll be talking about things like strafe dodging, how to properly switch between weapons, and of course, combining a lot of different elements to make sure you're coming on top of those 1v1s you find yourself in. Until next time, though, keep those allies up and make sure that you keep holding it down.